Hey everybody, Fetty here, and this is part four of my how to build a pole barn video series. I finally got all these posts in the ground, and boy, it was kind of a challenge because the weather took a bad turn here, and it got to raining and snowing and carrying on, and I just about couldn't catch a day or two where I could get those posts concreted in, but I finally did, and they've been sitting here for a few days, and that concrete set up real good, and it's time to move on to the next part of this project. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to band the top and the bottom of this building and I'm going to build some bracing and I'm going to get this thing ready to set trusses. Now something I did just a minute ago just for kicks is I checked my diagonals. I wanted to see how accurate I was using the string line and the batter boards. And like I said at this point it's just for kicks because if you're off there's not a whole lot you can do about it. I fully expected I'd be off of quarter inch or maybe even a half inch but when I pulled the tapes I'm dead on I just couldn't hardly believe that I was just dead on and that just goes to show that if you pay attention to what you're doing and and you're careful using a string line and a batter board you can be really really accurate with it so I'm feeling pretty good about how square my building is now in my previous videos I didn't really mention how deep I dug my holes. And I didn't bring that up for a couple of reasons. One is I didn't want to get into the big, you know, debate with all the internet experts. But more importantly, how deep you dig your holes really depends on where you're at. Where I'm at, I mean, it gets cold here in the winter, but it don't get those real hard, deep freezing colds. And the concern with, with your posts is you want them to be deep enough so they're below the frost line because there's some phenomenon called frost heave and I don't really understand how it works or why it works but when it freezes real hard it, it the frost you know, I guess the frozen ground wants to try to push those posts up out of the ground so you want your post to be below that freeze line now my advice is just wherever you're at talk to people who know you know talk to your code people or experts who do this kind of stuff, they'll know. Uh, just so you know, my posts are three and a half feet deep in the ground, so I'm way below the frost heave for where I'm at, or the frost line for where I'm at, so I'm good to go and I'm feeling pretty good about it. First thing I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna check level on my posts. If you remember, when I dug these holes, I spent a lot of time bedding each hole in concrete and getting them all up on the same plane. Then I went ahead and notched my posts before I ever put them in the hole. Conceptually, the tops of my posts all ought to be level. Reality, they're probably not. In the last video, I showed you how I, I came down, I picked a number, I picked five feet, just some random number. And I came down from the top of each post and measured down five feet and I marked a line. I'm gonna show you now how I'm gonna use that reference line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in my high corner. I'm gonna set my laser up, and I'm gonna take the laser receiver, and I'm gonna hold it on that post, and whenever I'm you know, shooting level and get a solid tone, I'm gonna mark a line. And I'm gonna go around to each post and do that. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna measure from my five foot line to this new line. Let's say it's two inches. Hopefully, every post around, all the way around will measure two inches, but reality, it probably won't. So I expect that, you know, some of them are going to be off. If I'm off a quarter inch or eighth inch, I'm not going to worry about that. But if I'm off much more than that, I'll probably climb up on that post and shave that notch out a little bit and kind of bring it back down into level. So that's the first thing I'm going to do today, and it's time to get started. Okay, so I'm standing here in the high corner, and this high corner is what I've kind of referenced everything off of on this building. Right here is my five-foot line. I'm just gonna take this receiver right here, just start moving it down till I get tone on it. Right there. Put me a mark on it. Now I'm just gonna measure from this five foot reference line down to my new line. Ten and a half inches. So I'll just make me a note, it's ten and a half. Now I have to go around to all these other posts and measure them, and hopefully I'll hit ten and a half inches plus or minus an eighth or a quarter inch. Okay, so I've moved to another post. Here's my five foot reference line. 
and I'll just start bringing this down until I get tone. Make me a mark, and I'll measure down on this one. This one's ten and a half inches, so I'll just go ahead and write that down, so I'm good to go on this one. Now, if I'd been off a little bit, let's say I was ten and five eighths, I'd just put me a mark here and say plus an eighth or something like that so I know how much off this post is but this one's perfect. Now let's measure another one. Measure is there's my reference line. This one's 10 and 5 eighths. So let me write that down, 10 and 5 eighths. So I'm off an eighth. An eighth is a saw blade, that don't matter. I'm good, good to go on this post. I'm blown away at how accurate this turned out. I've got two posts that are an eighth inch too low and they happen to be on each each side and they're not carrying any weight so they don't matter. And on the front I got one that's about a sixteenth inch too tall. I don't think that's gonna matter, but when I put the beam on there, if it gets all hinky, I'll just I'll shave off a sixteenth of an inch. It just goes to show if you spend a lot of time on the front end and have a good instrument, a good laser, you can hit this thing just right. So I'm, I'm tickled to death. So now it's time to go ahead and start putting the banding beams around the top. I'm going to use pine 2 by 12s because they're really strong and they're really heavy too. So I've got to figure out a way to get those things up there 10 feet in the air. But it's time to do that now. Okay, it's time to go ahead and start trimming up these 2 by 12s I have two 12 footers that are going to go on this side and you might say well it's 24 feet deep just lay them up there and nail them but you got to remember these posts are notched and these corner posts have three inches taken out of them so I need to take off six inches off that 24 foot run so I need this to be 23 and a half feet. Now I'm not going to just put one in place and then you know nail it up and then lay another one up there and scribe it and cut it wherever it falls. I'm going to cut it so that there's 23 and a half feet of tube of 12 running down through there. And that way, if one of these posts is out of plumb a little bit, and I'm talking a little bit because I, I can't move it very much, but if it's out, you know, a quarter inch or something like that, then I can kind of mash it back into place. So let's go ahead and cut these things. Probably should have done this first, but I just wasn't thinking. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put a screw in it for right now until I get everything looking good, then I'll come back and nail it. That'll hold it in place real good till I can get that other one in, kind of see how I'm looking.
may not have been obvious to you at first what I was trying to do, but those two poles on the end were a little bit out of plumb. And by doing it the way that I did it and using that clamp to kind of draw it out a little bit, I went and put the level back on it. And those two poles are, they're perfect now. They're plumb and they just look really good. Okay, I got those two sides banded and they're just tacked up there right now. I'm not gonna really lay the nails to them until I get all the bands on and make sure that I'm feeling really good about everything being square and plumb up at the top. Guess it's part of my deep-seated fear of commitment, but you know, once you once you run those ring shanks in there, you are committed at that point. So I just wanna make sure everything's looking real good before I do that. I've gotta get the front and back bands on now. Now this building's 32 feet wide and I'm working with 16 foot tuba 12s. Now the front and the back, since they're gonna be carrying the trusses and have all that weight on them, I'm gonna stack two two by 12. So it's gonna be really, really a thick beam running across the front and the back. Now I don't have a 32 foot two by 12, so I'm gonna to have to break these things up. What I don't wanna have happen is I don't want my seams hitting in the same place. And I definitely don't want two seams hitting where a truss is gonna be laying. So, Here's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start that first run with two 16 footers. That'll get me my span there. What that's gonna do is make my, my seams be staggered and that'll be better, you know, for carrying that weight. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in behind those two beams and I've got some lag bolts or some lag screws and I'm gonna run lag screws probably about every four feet across that span, maybe too thick and uh, draw those two two by 12s up really solid together. And then I'll have essentially one beam and it'll be really strong that way. So that's what I'm gonna do. Gotta figure out a way to get them 16 footers up there. Those 12 footers on the sides were about all I can manhandle. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. I guess I'll redneck engineer something to help me get them up there. So let's get started. Well, it may not have been pretty, but I got them up there and it turned out really good. That post right there is one that was a little bit low. So I had to cut just a, a little shim, just a smidge and lay it in that notch. And that brought them up just perfect. Uh, I'm just tickled to death with how they hit just so good. Uh, I checked the, the ends. It's real good and plumb on the ends. So I'm feeling really good about this. I'm gonna go ahead and get the first band on the back and once that looks good I'm gonna come back in start nailing these things off and then I'll put the the next two bands on the front and back okay here in the back again I don't want my seams to be hitting in the same place so at first run I'm gonna come in with two 16 footers and that's gonna work out pretty good because they'll hit right center on that center post and that way all my seams will be staggered and most of them will be falling on top of a post. So that'll work out really good. I'm not gonna make you watch me do it because by now you kind of see my method, but I'll go ahead and get these up and we'll start nailing this thing off. Okay, I got that first 
run a band all the way around that turned out really good. Now, them, them two by 12s are a little aggravating to work with being up that high, but everything went in really good. My notches look real good. I'm real good and level at the top. Had a couple poles on the ends that were a little bit out of plumb, and I was able to draw them back out. So everything is really plumb and square and level, and I'm just feeling really good about it. I'm going to come in now with these, these galvanized nails here. And I'm going to start nailing it off. And at that point, I just need to get the, the second run of band on the front and the back, and that part will be done. Well, I got all that nailed off and it's really good and strong now. I nailed the piss out of it, so it'll it'll probably be there forever. What I'm gonna do now is I gotta get that second run on the front and the back. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna stagger the seams on that thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with some of this adhesive here, some of this glue. I'm gonna gob a bunch on before I put those beams together. And then, I'm gonna come in behind it with these three inch lag screws here. And I'm gonna run these in and just draw that beam up together, kind of like a lamb beam at that point. It'll be good and strong. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do all of it. I'm gonna put a piece up and then I'll just kind of demonstrate what I'm doing. So let me go ahead and get started. Last thing I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna put some cross bracing in on the corners to kind of take a wiggle out of it. And at that point, it'll be ready to put the trusses on. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at now. I got all the band around the top. I got two runs of band on the front and the back. All my seams break on a post. I've got it glued and screwed. Uh, I've got my bracing in the corners, and now I'm ready to set the trusses. It's supposed to rain in the next seven or eight days, so I'm kind of shut down. But when the weather breaks, this thing's ready. I can just come in here and set those trusses down. I know this was a pretty long episode, and I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I just had a lot to get done to get this thing ready to put the trusses on. Hope you enjoyed the video, maybe got something out of it, learned something, maybe got some of your own ideas. As always, if you like my videos, remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.